Halo Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with the quarterfinals of my tournament that I am hosting currently to decide who is going to be the first Swiss Guard in my Discord. Uh, a position of honour requires honourable men and warriors to hold this position and we have some great battles here today. The first battle is between Gandalf and Cloco. Gandalf is playing as Mastodon against Cloco playing as Galatia. I'm pretty sure he played as these guys last time and he did very well as them um, last time. So we'll see whether he can play off again. It looks like the skirmish phase has just begun. It looks like Cloco is going to have to pull back his archers as he's getting focused down by Cretan archers. I'm going to just put this on normal speed. Now, as the cavalry, the noble horse and Cappadocian cavalry look like they're getting ready to take on some Tarantine cavalry and some companion cavalry, which are very nasty. That is probably going to be Gandalf's power base. This really is companion cavalry, probably the strongest cavalry in this game. He's got a lot of Thorax swords, Thorax pikes, hot plights, and even some Thracian warriors. While Cloco is bringing, obviously, the Galatian legionnaires. These boys, you know, they're the van they're bread and butter of this. Uh, of this faction. You don't bring anything else really if you're playing as Glacier. It's these guys and nothing else. Fairly strong. Um, actually probably very strong. They're very heavy melee. And if you don't know that they only cost like 800 coin per unit. So they're very cheap to get for a heavy melee unit. He's also got some Glacian swords to support his flanks. But he, yeah, he's mainly bringing Legionnaires. He's got some Syrian archers and he's got some cavalry as well which looks like it's about to engage on the flanks. We will see. Looks like um, Gandalf is losing the archer fight at the moment, looking at the amount of bodies that are down already. A lot of Cretan archers are already dead. A fair few other like Syrian archers, but not many. And looks like, are we going to see a javelin? Yeah, here we go. I think this is going to be a cut. They're going to get caught here. These Cappadocians are going to catch the Tarantine. He didn't have them on skirmish mode. And they've been caught. So that's probably the death of these Tarantine Cav, unfortunately. Yeah, lots of Cappadocians in here. And that's them probably already trying to break. He's trying to pull them out. And that's just going to do a lot more damage than good. And here comes... Oh, he's going to get a good charge on the Companion Cav. And that's not great either because they're a shock cavalry unit. So they really need to get the, uh, the charge to start off with. And they're losing decisively. Wow, that was an excellent charge. Now he's got infantry in into support. And that Tarantine Cav looks like it's already broken. Yep, the infantry lines looks like they're about to engage. The carry fight on the other side looks like Gandalf has been caught out again. I mean, it looks like he's going to get a bit of a charge there with this general, but this unit here... Actually, no, it might be, this one might have done okay. It's winning the fight. Yeah, it looks like the infantry is looting decisively. They might have done okay on this side. But they're shock cavalry, so they won't survive forever in prolonged melee. But here we go, the infantry clash about to begin. Thorax swords against Glacian swords. I imagine the Thorax will win this fight. But as we go down the line, like Hot Plights against Glacian Legionnaires, I don't think they'll win that. The Pikes here getting really well pulled out of position. They need to just... Well, the Archers need to kill the other Archers. Oh my gosh, this Thorax Pike is getting absolutely rinsed. But are they going to engage this? It looks like they are. It looks like the Legionnaires are going to just let these Pikes engage. He's going to lose a couple of men for his uh, decision there. Actually, no, maybe not. These archers need to focus on this final pike unit, and they've really got Mastodon in a sticky position. But he's shooting the other archers. He's shooting the Rhodian slingers. Not a bad target. Facing the wrong way. I turn these guys around. He's got probably the elite, more elite skirmishers, and he could do a lot of damage. Um, these pikes, I would flank, but then he's leaving himself open to these other Galatian legionnaires. So he's got a really tough decision there. The cavalry's already in amongst the archers. They won on the flanks. These poor Rhodian slingers are getting uh, cut down. Excellent volleys there. I think he's just trying to take out more. Yeah, oh my gosh. Look how many pikemen just fell over dead there. Yeah, these pikes are going to go back and try and deal with the general, I think. What's he got here? Thracian warriors going in. These could be pretty good. If he gets a good flank with these guys, these guys are a good shock infantry unit. Flank with these guys and you'll do a lot of damage to them. But his front line starting to break now. Hot plate's not doing so well. Where's the general? Oh, Macedon's general's dead. I didn't even realize. So he really badly lost out on this left flank as well. So much so that his general died. 
Oh, and they're getting absolutely rinsed of these Thracian nobles. They're just getting, like, peppered by archers. And it looks like Galatia's going to win this one pretty straightforward. A very quick and excellent um, battle by Cloco there. He just played really, really well. He's definitely one of the stronger players going into the semi-finals. So we'll end the replay there and we will have a look at the end results. Quickly, so there you go. You can have a look at the end results. Mastodon not doing so strong, only getting 490 kills. And then McGlacian doing very strong. Obviously, his Legionnaires doing very well and his cavalry doing well. So there you go. If you want to have a look at the end results, there they are. And now on to the second battle. So we are here with the second battle and it looks like we're going to have another Galatian player. I believe this is... Um, I believe this is Heroes and we're against um, Matters here as the Lusitani. I could be mixing them up. If, if I am, then I do apologize. Um, but it does look like the skirmish phase is just beginning. Lusitani, Lusitania we don't often see on the um, battlefield. It's good to see them on the battlefield once and for all. Um, I mean, these guys, the Spanish faction, if you didn't know, they're not the strongest, but they certainly got good ambush uh, capabilities. I don't think um, any ambush units are being brought. Uh, I think it's just mainly veteran shield warriors and Lusitani warriors along with some... Oh, no, there's some guerrillas, which I'm pretty sure have capabilities to be ambush, which could have been pretty useful. They could have definitely used that against, um, well, against them. But, I mean, they would have just instantly spawned behind enemy lines and they would just been seen. It's not like there's many trees to hide in. So... Yeah, that is the only side of d downside of bringing this faction. There isn't, you aren't actually able to ambush because we're on a nice open field. And here we go. It looks like the infantry is going to be the first thing to clash today. Lots of gorillas um, or gorillas clashing first. Actually, no, it's not even the gorillas. It's the it is the Spanish nobles or like the Lusitani noble, uh, veteran warriors. Sorry, veteran warriors. Though. The nobles have chainmail, but it's against more legionnaires. So it looks like Glacier is becoming quickly one of the favourites factions to play as. But they're not doing so hot again in this fight. In this fight, look at this. They are not doing so well. They are losing this fight here. That's not so good. Lots of javelins being thrown in here. So, could they get overwhelmed this time? Could Galatia be shown to be proven to be beaten? Could someone then actually use this against, say, Cloco? But here we go. It looks like this clash is going to begin. The gorillas probably aren't going to do so well. They are a very light unit. But if this unit can surround, they might certainly do some damage. But the cavalry has got through here. This is a cause of concern for Lusitania. This noble cavalry looks like it will probably go for these slingers. Iberian slingers. I don't know how much ammo they've got left. But he definitely needs to uh, can't control these guys. Maybe get these spears in here. But it looks like the veteran shield warriors aren't doing so well against the Galatian legionnaires. But certainly these, like, nobles doing excellent against them. They're causing a lot of damage. And they're now going to surround them. That's the only problem. Yeah, that's a pretty good charge. Got the end of that. I mean, a lot of archers going, a lot of arch fire going on over here as well. And cavalry fighting cavalry and infantry. This is not good for Lusitania. Scutiari cavalry definitely gonna get overwhelmed there. It's not the quicker, it's not the strongest, but it's certainly very quick and light and effective. But they just need to if they take out this general for Galatia, he's so like isolated, he's behind the enemy lines. And Lusitani, even though he's like getting hammer and anvil, he could surround this unit. Like I I wouldn't send these two units of spears in here now. Actually, he's not got a bad idea. He now threatens the flank. If he can break all of this of Galatia, he could really do some damage to the infantry, but the cavalry fight's been won by Glacia, quite clearly. And now it's he's just mopping up any infantry units that are, like, weak of the Satanias. There you go. The guerrilla units are breaking. And the Satanias getting infantry in behind, but cavalry here. You see, this is what I mean. The cavalry are just winning on their flanks, and they've been able to come in and now and... Helping the center fight. Look at that with the sun beating down on the armor. Excellent. And these boys are probably going to get killed quite easily by the cavalry. 
So they are apparently losing. Well, in numbers they're losing, but I mean, I imagine Archer Fire is just not helping. I I had high hopes for these Lusitani nobles to break through, and they just can't do it. They just don't have the the numbers. Oh, but that's a very good charge there. That's a really good well volley, I should say, not charge. Look at this, seven men, and they're still holding. This is what Glacian legionaries do. But now they've broken through. I think it's probably, like, the odds are very much against Lusitania now, but especially with the general wavering, I think he might be dead, or he's going to die, certainly. And unfortunately, like, the bold move of bringing Lusitania is not going to pay off. So But there you go, a close defeat for Lusitania, end the replay and have a look. Oh, so it's Heroes of the Greeks playing as Lusitania, and uh, Mathis playing as Galatia. I do apologise, I mixed them up. Um, I did think I had got it wrong when I said it. But there you go, there are the end results. Um, Lusitania's probably best units were his Galatia, um, not his Galatia, his Lusitanian nobles. And then Galatian Legionnaires also pulling off uh, the usual and getting lots of kills, along with the cavalry to be fair this time. As well, so there you go. If you want to have a look at them, there they are. And now on to the third battle of this episode. We, so here we go, another battle and another Galatian army. Um, we have Sharos here playing against Aiden. Aiden is playing as the Arverni against Galatia. Here is the infantry clash. So it's going to be Celts v Celts today. Interesting to see whether anyone can beat a Galatian army. If not, then uh. Well, that's going to be a bit worrying, and Galatia may need to be banned. Because, uh, otherwise, because it just seems like the meta is becoming spam out legionaries, and we'll be there, we'll, we'll be victorious. Which is very true. I mean, Gal that is the problem with the funds that, and banning Rome. Galatia is the next, uh, the next option on the list, I think, for many people who like to just bring, like, lots of heavy infantry. And just make a big old line. And that was a very nice little uh, shield. Lifting a man over your shield. Um, looks like the general for um, uh, Verney's already in combat. He's fighting some Galatian legionnaires. But he is actually beating. He needs to really surround this unit with some uh, with some infantry. He's also breaking the Syrian archers. And he's got a free unit of chosen swords here. He needs to get in inside. But I mean he has got a spare unit of Galatian legionnaires ready and waiting. Which is a real shame, but he, has, he is breaking these Syrian archers, which is good. And he also, oh, he's not winning on the flanks. I was thinking he was winning. No, Glacier is winning on the flanks of his cavalry. Mercenary Cappadocians winning on the flanks. And what's happening over here? Looks like Heavy Horse is going to get overwhelmed again by Mercenary, uh, by Glacian Swords and Cappadocians. That is a real shame. And it looks like the cavalry is also striking to the back. And, yeah, Oathsworn are getting overwhelmed. But they'll hold for a while because they are Oathsworn. But look, it's just one long infantry line. And that's... It's very epic, actually. Very epic. Look at them cutting men down. Excellent. Kill them all, and I think that's the Arverni's breaking here. Yeah, Chosen Swords breaking. 63 left, wow. And 50. Chosen Swords usually hold a little bit longer than that. 128, and they're wavering, wow. Just one more charge, and these guys may actually break. It's, these ca it's the cavalry charge in the rear. These Mercenary Cappadocian Swords, um, well, cavalry are just doing really well, and the Galatian Legionnaires now are able to flank around if they're freed up. General is doing absolute devastating work to, uh, well, any Chosen Swords that dare show their face. And it's just Oathsworn left, I think, now. And there's a bit of cavalry over here. But it looks like the Arverni is also going to be beaten by Galatia as it currently stands. I don't... His General, is he doing okay? He's not winning anymore. He was winning his fight. And now he's uh, losing decisively. A sad sight to see Oathsworn getting over overwhelmed by Legionnaires. Oathsworn probably a lot more expensive as well than Legionnaires, and they can't actually... Two units of them surrounding them. They're getting overwhelmed. Great shame.
But yes, as you can see now, the front line is uh, in tatters, and it's just basically down to a couple of units of the Arverni holding back the rest of the uh, Galatians, and they're not they're not really holding them back. They're more just waiting till they get murdered. It's just a matter of time. I mean, I'm not sure what this this host one unit's not even actually attacking. They actually won their fight, I think, and now the uh, they're just getting attacked in the back, just piece by piece by the Galatian Legionnaire unit. There you go, a massive chain route about to happen. And that is going to be the battle by the looks of it. Galatia wins again, 3 of 3. So it is looking like they are going to need to be uh, banned for the final two rounds. I know that's kind of like slipping in a rule. But I mean, I want to see if someone's going to win uh, the Swiss Guard rank. They've got to be able to show versatility. And kind of have uh, the Galatians just spam being the way to victory. So we're going to probably change up a few of the rules for the final two rounds. But yes, as you can see there, Legionnaires, as usual, doing very well. The Arverni, the General doing okay, getting 100 plus kills, as with the Oswan, as expected. But really, everything else did get overwhelmed. So unlucky for Aiden, he is now out. And Sharos moves on to the semi-finals. And now, on to the fourth and final battle. So the final battle is about to begin, or is just beginning. We have a bit of a skirmish phase to start with. And we don't have a battle with Galatia in. It's going to be Carthage versus the Seleucids. So two sort of Hellenic factions. And we have plenty of Cretan archers here shooting away, and a few of them getting focused down. So we have uh, Andrew here playing as Carthage against TZN playing as the Seleucids. So it's very refreshing to see something other than Galatia in a battle, I won't lie. Um, obviously those players did very well and they deserve to obviously win with Galatia, but it gets a little bit boring after a while. So here we go, we're going to have some Libyan infantry clashing into Thorax swords. So yes, it'll be in, in, enjoyable to see this one and see some uh, something other than a lot of angry Celts charging in. So it looks like it's going to be a good old fight between some Libyan infantry and some Thorax swords here. What do we have out on the flanks? We have Carthaginian cavalry, a lot of cavalry here being used. Uh, a game of cavalry as well and Median cavalry. So a lot of, um, well, a lot of variety in cavalry here. We've got some shock, we've got some melee. I think, oh, that's interesting. The Game of Cavalry is actually winning probably out of just getting the nasty charge. But they are being supported now with Cal... Uh, there's now Mercenary Italian Infantry here and Persian Hoplites going in. So it'll be interesting to see if Carthage can win that fight. He is losing the infantry fight. Look at the amount of dead bodies of the Cretan archers. That is insane. Like, you can't really see that. I mean, I'm actually better showing it from a bit of a bird's eye view. Look at that. That's like all the Cretan archers dead. The general now getting focused down, so he's having to pull back. Looks like the Hellenic Cataphract general is also under threat here a little bit. He needs to be careful. He's now going to get surrounded by Sacred Band and Libyan Infantry. Definitely needs to worry about this to Seleucids. But he's just now walking through as well, the Libyan Infantry. That's not a smart move. He's, uh, these Sacred Band can really get in there and trap these guys. That'll be huge. But the Seleucid player needs to be careful of the, uh, well, this, not the Seleucid player, the um, Carthage player needs to be worried about this. The Seleucid is just getting ready, lining up a lot of uh, troops, getting ready to uh, surround and flank. There's massive breaks going over here from Seleucid. He's got Thoros Spears breaking, Persian Hoplites. Silver Shield Pikemen are going to be out of position very soon. They're being forced to pull back. So even though he's winning the cav fight is Seleucid, he's not winning the infantry fight. And here we go. It looks like... What happened to the cataphracts? They got absolutely focused down by Javis is what happened. Where did they all die? I think they all died. I'm not quite sure where they all died. There's quite a few dead here, but... They are going to beat the general's bodyguard, possibly, of... Carthage, but I mean, no, you need to keep the keep the infantry in here, Carthage. You need to keep this infantry in and break the Hellenic cataphracts. If you break this, you've won the battle. He's got archers already engaging in Sacred Band just to keep them at bay. Oh, he's got his general out. That's very smart. Now it's just Sacred Band up against Hellenic cataphracts, and this will not end well for the, the Seleucids. Yep, this is not where you want cataphracts to be at all. Quickly indeed, kill him. Yep, he's routed. I don't know if he's dead. No, he's. I don't think he's dead. 
But yeah, now all that Carthage has, Carthage has to do is keep his general out of there. He could charge into this Syrian heavy archer. I probably would. They're probably going to set up and try and shoot. Yep, they definitely are. Right, they generally need to charge in here. Yep, they're losing. Oh, what is happening? They're losing a lot of men for no reason. At least he's making the charge now. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. It would have been better if he had 20 men instead of 10 men, though. And now the uh, Carthaginian cavalry probably needs to get up here and support the general. Though the infantry is now breaking through as well. And there you go. Carthage is probably going to win this. He started off a little bit shaky. He was starting to lose the cavalry fights. But it's not quite over. The Seleucid still has a lot left. He's certainly got a lot over here. But I'd say he's probably won this because just the general... Oh no, has Carthage lost his general too? Carthage has lost his general. Maybe it's not over for the Seleucids. That is huge. This could go either way now. I'd say because Carthage has more cavalry has a slight advantage, but... Have they got pikes? They have got pikes for the Seleucids. And pikes are just nasty. They're just plain old nasty. And they've got no archers have um, Carthage after losing all theirs here. So they're forced to uh, just charge at these pikes. Yeah, he's just got Sacred Band. He's got another pike unit here as well. Okay, so Carthage needs to send this pike unit, to, uh, this Sacred Band unit to surround these pikes. Sending this Sacred Band unit on its own just to just charge in these pikes is just going to end poorly. They are breaking these archers, that's good. Leaving them with just a few units left. Mercy Noble Fight is going in. Okay, they're now engaging the pikes. Now you need to sac they're sacrificing themselves. You need to surround these pikes. Immediately. Look at these poor men. They're just having to go in here and fight these pikemen. They're just like, what do we do? What did we do to deserve this? But here we go. A flank on the pikes. That'll certainly do a lot of damage. Yeah, and they're trying to pull out from that. But they're going to lose some men from it. They just need archers, really, and this will really punish them. I'd actually now probably take out this Thorax Sword unit. It's now very much on its own. The Pikes as well, you could probably take out again, surround this Noble Fighter unit. Luckily, Carthage has realised he's just sending his men into suicide. He's better just pulling this Sacred Band unit out, especially with, like, no generals left. You need every unit possible. But wavering here from Carthage, this is not good. The Pikes are doing a lot of damage. They can break this Thorax Sword unit though, they can then kill these pikes. Luckily, it looks like the Noble Fighters are going to rally. And you imagine this other unit will probably rally the Noble Fighters. I know these are Italians, they definitely won't rally, they're Italians. And here we go though, the pikes have been committed to fight that way, and they're going to get attacked in the rear, and that's probably going to be it for the pikes. These guys are going to be in real trouble now. And a good cavalry charge from Carthage. That'll certainly, yeah. Uh, Make it very unpleasant to be a pikeman. And it looks like everything, yeah, the Persian hot plate's gone. It's just this unit here of other pikes, which you imagine will just break very, very soon. But also, it's going to be the only unit left, and it can't stop itself from being flanked. So, Seleucid certainly put up a solid fight, but it looks like Carthage is going to come out on top of this one. As long as he doesn't have a chain route now, he should be okay. But these pikes should start to waver soon. If anything, I pull this sword unit back. Because you've now got this. You've actually surrounded them now. I think he is. Oh no. Is he pulling them back or are they just. Yeah, he's pulled them back. Smart. Pull them back. And then just charging with the rear again. Because it looks like these guys are going to follow. And they just got their swords out. So now it's going to be even worse for them. And there you go. They're breaking. And then that just leaves the final pike unit. Oh shit, they're not broken yet. Uh, this other pike unit's not doing too well either, but it's... Yeah, it's getting rear charged by cavalry. Actually, no, I don't know if that's rear or front. That might be... I think they just got... They frontal charged that, did the cavalry. It's a bit bizarre. Yeah, they're now frontal charging it, and that's just not a good idea. That... Yeah, those pikes are just... Well, actually, the pikes are breaking to the cavalry charging front on, which is just bizarre. But the final unit of pikes here, the other one just broke... Yeah, look at that. It's just suicide from Carthage. Luckily, he doesn't have to use the army that he... Uh, imagine if he had to use the army that he had left into the next round. Because he would have no cavalry. He had very little left. 
But this has been the closest battle, and there we go, a costly victory in the replay. So yes, well played to uh, Andrew, who is Jordan Hench, and he did very well as Carthage, to be fair. He did okay. He had, like I said, had a shaky start, but when he got that general, it was just a matter of time till um, TZN here. Uh, broke but I mean both players did very well so if you want to have a look at their end results there you go the Pike certainly for Seleucids did very well and the Noble Fires for Carthage did excellent as well so now I'll, hopefully I will put up a table for the semi-finals showing who is playing who so there will be two matches left Galatia is now also going to be uh, banned so you can't use them in the final round because I would like to see some different factions obviously used and uh, I, I want this Swiss Guard member to you know have deserved it like I said. So anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe and a comment if you want to see more of this tournament. And if you want to take part in any future ones, do also let me know by joining the Discord down below in the description. There will be other tournaments going on very soon. Um, I have many more Swiss Guard roles to be filled. So anyway guys, if you enjoyed, I will see you guys 